We all remember doing German and French in school. And Schuldigung and Jumme Pell. Textbooks where every inch of La Rochelle and its residents had been covered with spunking great cocks. Eating a baguette, are you? Old man outside a cafe. Not for much longer. Teachers insisted we'd need it. You're citizens of Europe, free to work and live and love in our EU sister countries. You've got to know the lingo. Most of bloody time that was. All I know is, when I'm DJing, and a sweaty club goer who's just been injecting themselves with marijuana in the toilets asks for some German house, they're getting a blast of this. Hello, hello. <laughs> What was it like from the other side, as a German wanting to learn English, say, in 1982, via the television programme, English for Beginners? I can't help but feel the choice of image deliberately paints us as a repressed nation of milk toasts. Now imagine what an English German teacher looks like in 1982. Go on. Hello. I'm Graham Pascoe. Well done. Aimed at non-native speakers, the whole thing has the stilted quality of being addressed by a doctor after you've woken from a very bad accident. I'm Graham Pascoe. My name's Graham Pascoe. Can you tell me who the Prime Minister is? Where does it hurt? You want to learn English by television. That's a very good idea. Well, thanks. Of course, half of this is in German. Ich heiße Graham Pascoe und ich werde Sie durch die Sendungen begleiten und Ihnen die englische Sprache vorstellen. Speak English, mate. Ain't you heard of Brexit? No idea what he's saying, as I spent school rifling through the German dictionary for words like poo and penis, which was just penis with an accent. You may think, this is a weird thing to be covering. Something you can't understand half of. Yes. Who's that? Come in. Who are you? I'm an actor. Ah, you're an actor. What's your name? My name's Russell Grant. Welcome to the multiverse. Russell ist also Schauspieler. Er wird zusammen mit einer Partnerin in jeder Sendung eine kleine Szene vorspielen. The constant repetition has the tone of bent coppers getting a forced confession from a local simpleton. Hello. Hello. Hello, sagt man. Hello. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I'm Russell Grant. My name's Russell Grant. I'm not having it. You can't just claim to be someone else. This is Russ... the fuck? Now look and listen. Are you Professor Pascoe? No, no. I'm Russell Grant. Oh, my name's Jane Egan. Miss Jane Egan. What? Has everyone got memento disease? Your tea, sir. What? But, excuse me, who are you? Good afternoon. Are you Professor Pascoe? No, no. I'm Russell Grant. I'm going fucking mad here. Who? Who's that? 
What's your name? Who are you? I'm an actress. What's your name? Who are you? I'm... I'm Russell Grant. What's your name? My name's Graham Pascoe. Sit down and listen. A, B, C, D, E. That's hardly going to get the dance floor popping. An example. You say you're Some German words are used in the English language as is. For example, rucksack, delicatessen and mansplaining. E, F, G. Stop. Listen. Good. Very good. Listen again. Once we've got the basics out of the way, we learn using some typical English situations, like crime. Hello. Graham, what have you been up to? I know you look like one, but you're not, are you? Let's go for a drive. If someone offers you a ride in their car, say no! Another Scotland Yard department deals with calls from the public. If you need help, you dial 999 and a patrol car will arrive in a few minutes. But as this is a German tape... If you need help, you dial... No! Now, where's Russell? Ah, there he is. At least they've got our British bobbies, right? <sighs> Hello, Graham. Hello, Russell. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. You may have noticed, English for Beginners is quite unlike any learning programme you've seen before. Can I come in? Yes, of course! The strange tone makes more sense when you realise, in Ian McNaughton, it shares a director with Spike Milligan's Q and Monty Python. Notably, McNaughton also directed the two Python specials which were translated for German broadcast. Hello? And I heard this bang! Inside the bank. Inside the bank! Okay. I'm coming. Did they catch them? Heute war es wirklich nicht besonders schwierig. Similarly, many of the random phrases, costumes, and even timing or of a somewhat Pythonian bent. What was Jane doing when she heard a loud bang? The hammer isn't in the toolbox. It used to be in the toolbox. What are you getting at exactly? That I took the hammer for some nefarious reason? That I snuck in and took it so I could, oh, I don't know, put it into my bottom? Because if that's what you're implying... Some of these paint a sad picture of humanity in decline. Jane doesn't go to concerts anymore. Jane used to go to concerts. Russell doesn't read books anymore. It used to be a sweet shop, but now it's a private house. Humphrey doesn't smoke a pipe anymore. Nobody plays with frogs. Nothing happened. All this bloody talking is unnecessary. The best communication is with no words at all. Come on, help me.
but you can't take it easy when learning, so it's back to the grind. Hello. It's Unit 14 today. Whose photo is it? Nice tattoo for all the school kids watching. Unfortunately, Graham's struggling again. Oh, dear. What's going on here? Whose hat is this? And what's this? And whose jacket is this? Forget about that. I can hear voices. And is there a more classic comedy bit than this? Come on! With the tatty visuals and overacting, this plays like a dystopian 70s BBC serial about post-apocalyptic decay. Whose hat is this? Put it over there, with mum's hat and dad's shoes. Well, whose job is it? Yours! Six years since the bomb dropped. Me old guts is one big tumour. Here's an old blanket. Is it ours? Or does it belong to my parents? <coughs> <coughs> photograph of a girl. Interesting. It's a picture from the before times. Before the sky turned white. <laughs> the radiation poisoning plays havoc with Graham's already fragile psyche. It's a photo of a very nice girl. Whose girlfriend is it? Whose book's this? It's mine. Whose book is this? It's my book. It belongs to me. When you really love your new car. It's my car. It's mine. What's this? Wet paint? And Humphrey is sitting on that chair? Oh no. Goodbye. Now look and listen. Disney are always harping on about the Mandalorian's ultra-realistic digital sets, but English for Beginners was doing it 40 years ago. Hello, Jane. Hello, Graham. Hello, Graham. Hello, Russell. There are Jane and Russell. Hello there. Hello, Graham. Hello. What a view of the castle. Yeah, this is a nice place. These driving scenes must have been filmed on location, surely. Vin Diesel could slot these straight into his little films. Stop! There's something coming! Goodbye! The one and only time they use extras, it's thrilling. Their Moss Isley Cantina scene. Hello? Who are you? I'm Humphrey Ham. Let's do an exercise now. I blank out of the window when you called. Ah, Michael, what are you playing at? The old BBC, you're going to have my head. <laughs> I'll say one thing, they've really captured the essence of the average Englishman. Damn! You can buy almost anything at Harrods. They'll arrange a holiday for you, or your wedding. I can't even afford the train fare to London. You can hire a Rolls Royce there, or buy an elephant. We also get their take on Scotland. Mac in ihrem Namen. Zum Beispiel Macmillan, McNaughton, McDonald, McFadden. Let's finish with a Scottish song. Look and listen again next time. Goodbye.
Every simple setup is packed with subtle backstory and underlying tensions, like Abigail's party or something. Yes, it's always difficult to get something for someone his size. I bought this vase for your mother. Isn't it lovely? You didn't have to get anything for mother. I got her an electric tin opener last week. Russell always looks shifty, like he got a blackmail letter before they called action, while Jane's trying her best, but clearly had enough, and made up her mind to leave him. Hello, Jane. Hello, Russell. How are you today? I'm fine. The weather's lovely. Have you got the picnic? Yes, I have. Hurry up, Jane. Imagine being stuck with these two, passive-aggressively sniping at each other all day. Are you hungry, Russell? Yes, I am. Aren't there any cheese sandwiches? No, sorry, there aren't. A ham sandwich, please. Yeah, I think I might make a move, actually. Nice to see you both. Have you got any beer? No, I haven't. What a day! What a day. What a picnic. Some of the phrases are still handy in a modern world. Like when you lean over to show your friend something from Facebook. Somebody from my old school. Or after you finally convinced your family to take a look at your YouTube videos. I'm sorry I was so silly. There's even one for a visitor who's asked to use your toilet. There are so many flies. Other times, it's all those questions you lay awake at night asking yourself. How much time have you got? How many knives are there? Aren't there any cheese sandwiches? And what's that? This mad bastard doesn't give a cack about identity fraud, showing his actual driving license blown up on screen. And that's my driving license, mein Führerschein. You're only down the road, Raymond. Perhaps I'll come and pay you a visit. I could swim when I was only four. Könnte. Well, that's charming. I'm having something right now, but I can't think of the English word for it. Graham? A breakdown? Thanks, Gray. Here, what did the cuck say to the bull? Fill her up, please. To which he replies, How long can I park here? Come. Came. Well, we've got to stop now. Our time's up. Did you take the photos? Did you have a nice time? Shunning the idea that education must be dry and fusty, they're not afraid to go out on a joke. What's that? It's a parking ticket. Oh no. Well, that's all for today. Look and listen again next time. Goodbye. So there we are. English for beginners. I can't lie. It's been nice to sit through some old telly and not have to be on the lookout for bloody Savile and all them lads. Thanks a lot. Look and listen again next time. Goodbye.